My name is Marco Birube and I'm the product manager for the Migration Toolkit for Containers. Uh, in this short uh, demo recording, I'll show you how to use MTC to migrate your applications from one OpenShift cluster to another OpenShift cluster. So here I just installed MTC on my OpenShift 4 cluster and I will use it to migrate some of my apps from OpenShift 3 to OpenShift 4. Uh, those clusters have already been pre-configured, so I have my source cluster, which is OpenShift 3 here, and also my host, which is my the current host where actually MTC is installed, which is my OpenShift 4. I also, create, I also configured some object storage repository that is going to be used to back up the Kubernetes object during the migration process, and I'm now ready to create my first migration plan. So if I click the uh, Add Migration Plan button, and I give this a name, so I'm just going to call this Migration Plan Demo. And then I'll select my source cluster, which is my OpenShift 3, and my destination cluster, which is where I am right now on OpenShift 4, as well as my object repository. Then I will see the list of namespaces that can be migrated from 3 to 4. So in this case here, I will select the uh, uh, sock shop namespace that I want to migrate, which includes a few PVs. Uh, and a few pods that I want to migrate over. So I'm going to click Next. Now MTC is discovering all the uh, PVs. Here I have all the PVs that are now um, attached to this namespace. I can choose to either copy or move. So if my source and destination cluster can share the same storage, uh, as an example, if they would share the same NFS backend, I could actually move my PVs instead of copying them. In this case, I will select copy. Then I will um, have the option to either do a file system copy or volume snapshot. So volume snapshot, snapshot is available when you are on public cloud. You can leverage uh, public cloud storage snapshot capabilities to move the data over. Uh, if you're using file system copy, then you have the possibility to either use RESTIC or direct what we call now direct migration, which actually is using rsync in the background. So I'm going to keep this as file copy as I want to use the new rsync capabilities. And here it is. Now I have direct migration available. So for direct migration uh, to work, uh, you need to expose some ports. So we have uh, network connectivity between source and destination, as well as same thing for the images here. If I want to copy that over, then I need to expose my, um, my registry uh, so that the source cluster, uh, so, so that the destination cluster can access the source cluster registry over the network. But as long as I do that, then I can uh, do a direct copy which will move the data from source to destination much faster as we will be able to bypass the object storage in the middle and stream the data from source to destination. Then I'm going to click Next. Here I can have a migration hook. A migration hook is uh, a way for me to add automation during my migration process. Uh, so if there's anything I would want to do, uh, as an example, change my DNS record or little balancer configuration, then I can add a hook. And here I'm going to call this uh, hook demo. Oh, no, it's hook demo. And I'm going to copy paste a playbook. I have a very, very simplistic playbook here, but it's just to give an example. So in this case, here, this playbook is just printing the new route to the log. But I could uh, reuse that to either of printing to the log, then I could do an API call as an example to my DNS to update that. Uh, I can also use a container, a custom container image. So if I don't want to use Ansible, I could script anything into any kind, any format I want and just run this as a container image. Uh, I can select where I want to run this, either on the source or the target cluster. So in this case here, I will choose to actually run this on my target cluster. In this example, I will use the migration controller. Uh, account name as well as the oops OpenShift migration namespace to run uh, this container, and I will actually choose to run this in post restore, which is at the completely at the end of my migration. And I'm gonna add this hook. Now this hook has been added, and I'm ready to finish my plan. I'm gonna click close, and here I have my first plan that have been created. Uh, I can have a look at the namespace, uh, review like the amount of PVs and data that is going to be copied over. And here I can uh, go back to my plan and I'm ready to execute the migration. So 
if uh, I want, I could actually do a stage process first. Stage will pre-copy as much of the data as possible from source to destination, but will not uh, flip the switch at the end. So shut down my app on three side and, and start it up on the destination side. So for example, I could run stage during business hours to accelerate the migration process later on during my window, uh, my maintenance window. In this case here, as this is just a test, I will just click migrate right away. I can also bypass the staging process. I also have the option to not shut down the application on the tree side and just keep both running. So as again, I'm testing right now, I wanna know if my apps can work on four as an example, then I could remove that check. So then the app will keep running in on the three side after the migration is completed. And then I'll click the migrate button. And now my, my migration process has, has started. Uh, if I wanna have more visibility, we have a new pipeline view here so here i can click here uh, to see my my migration that is currently in progress uh, if i want to even have more details i can click again and then I, i'm getting to a pipeline view that is going to show all the steps that are happening behind the scene during the migration process and a status so we'll let this run for a few minutes and we'll be back just after the migration is completed So here it is, my migration is now completed. As you can see here, everything went well. If I would have to troubleshoot any issue, here I have the resource ID that I could go dig into or even look at the view detail uh, of what happened during the migration process for each PV. Uh, in this case here, it looks like everything went fine. If I would go back to my plan, so my list of plan here, I could also have access from this drop down to either the logs or the debug information of what happened during the migration process. So this would help me troubleshoot any problems uh, if I would need to go in the background and see what happened uh, during the, all the resources in, in the migration process. I could even uh, get the OC get command directly from there or view the JSON file if I would want to dig into uh, what happened in the background. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.